All right, well, I believe we're now live. Um, it took a little longer to set up than I was expecting. I was having some technological difficulties with the internet. Literally, it's been working fine all day, and then just before I go starting a live stream, uh, we seem to be having some issues, so uh, not so good. But anyways, here we are, up and live, and it looks like we've already got some people in here. Got a bit of a derailment over there. Model Railway fan, how are you? I'm doing all right, how are you? Northwest Rail fan, welcome. See if we can get the other train going. Can you run the Berkshire? Yeah, we could probably make that happen. I'll let these go around for a few laps first. Capricorn says, I've been into RC cars for a while and want to get into HO scale. Found your channel and I love it. Oh, that's good to hear. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Uh, original the car. Or Sorry, I can't see your full name on here. The Crabe, okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for the super chat. Norman Corey, welcome. Run your most frustrating locomotive. I don't know if I want to run whatever engine's most frustrating. I don't I don't even know what that would be. One of my Bachman GS4s. Do you have any doodle bugs? I think I've got at least one. Let's see if we can find it here. Run your Genesis SD70 ACE. All right, well, we'll run the, the Burke first, but we'll see if we can find that doodle bug. I bought one, I think it was at Larkspur line a couple years ago, and I thought I was storing it somewhere here. It's a problem, every time I reorganize everything, I, I can't locate stuff after. Yeah, it's gotta be somewhere else. There it is. Can you run the Australian B-Class? Yeah, sure, we haven't run that one in a while. We've got a couple of requests already uh, queued up at the moment, so we'll run those first. Hey, SMT, for the next video, can we get an update on the other layout, please? Um, I'm gonna try, a lot of people have been uh, asking about that. That's actually one of the most popular videos on the channel now. Uh, I have to go buy more materials for it, but, um, yeah, I don't see why not. When you did your video of the coil rewind, do you happen to know what size is HO? Did my coil rewind? Um... If, if you're trying to ask what gauge the wire is, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know, I might have the spool around here. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go find a uh, Berkshire locomotive. We're going to get that on, and then after that we'll run the Doodlebug as well as the Australian B-Class. Are you able to run bigger trains on the inside track? Uh, probably nothing bigger than a Dash 9. run this one uh, right away because it's probably about the same speed as the uh, other train. Oh, 
After the B class, could you run a Centennial or a Decapod? Might be able to run a Centennial. I'm gonna focus on the uh, other request for the uh, time being though. That naturally weathered look on the soaked vinegar switcher was pretty slick. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm happy I was able to get that locomotive running again, but uh, part of me almost misses the rough look. Um, it would have been good if I could have... I mean, part of the problem is I was having trouble just opening the engine up because it was so corroded, but it would have been nice if I had just uh, redone the inside so I got all the electrical and motor working again, but leave the kind of rough look it had. Anyways, I think we're gonna take the switcher locomotive off and we're gonna set up the Berkshire. I'll also take the doodle bug off at the same time because I think the Berkshire is probably gonna run at a different speed. Take both those off. Can you run the O-scale locomotive? Uh, maybe later on. Right now, I just want to focus on the uh, other requests. What's your trick at getting trains? Uh, I'm always on the lookout. A lot of people say, how are you always like finding deals on eBay and stuff? There really isn't a secret. You just need to keep searching, keep searching, keep searching, and eventually you'll find stuff. Um, it doesn't guarantee it's going to be a good price, though. Like There are times when uh, I do overpay a little bit on eBay, but... When it's something that you really want, I mean, you know, you don't want to get swindled, but if it's something that you really want, you know, sometimes it's worth just buying it right away than having to wait two or three years to find one at a better price. Search, search, search. Yeah, exactly, that's right. And some of it's just dumb luck, honestly. Like, at a train show, you never know what you're going to find, but uh, sometimes you just stumble across the right thing. So anyway, this uh, locomotive right here was uh, sent in uh, a couple months ago by a gentleman in the chat here named uh, Corey. Pretty uh, fancy engine. He did a lot of his own uh, customization on it. Like, look how well done the lettering is. And he wired it up with uh, DCC and sound, all sorts of special lighting features. Switch that over. Oh, there we go. Hey, SMG, can you one of your favorite steam trains with the passenger cars on the layout? Yeah, we could try to make that happen. I also just realized I forgot to uh, remove the doodle bug over there. Big sad. I got a lot of N-scale stuff I have bought over the years, but I have nowhere to set it up and run it. I spent about three grand of my own money I've worked for, and I'm 19. I have nowhere to set it up and run it. Well, if I were you, I hope you have a test track. I mean, if you spend $3,000, you know, you want to get at least some use out of it. I went to a train show and got some passenger cars from the 1940s in U.S. occupied Germany. Hey, Harrison, are you going to the Messina train show? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. It might be on the Sunday, I don't really know. But, uh, yeah, I believe that's next weekend, actually, so I'm going to mark it down in my calendar. Hopefully I'll see some of you out there.
SMT, I just got into a railroad club in my town. About to save up for a DCC locomotive. Uh, that's fine. What do you think about geared logging locomotives? Do you have any favorite? Uh, pr probably Shea locomotives. And uh, the reason I say that is because they had one at uh, the Museum of Science and Technology here in Ottawa. And I don't know if they still bring it out, but when I was a kid, they would actually run it. And there was this one day... Uh, I was at the museum with my mom, and we went outside, and there it was, and we actually got to uh, take a ride on it, which was pretty cool. I mean, it was probably only uh, about uh, 50 feet of track we were uh, running it on, but uh, it was uh, it was really cool. Evening, Harrison. Can you please run a BNSF-9? Consist. Sure, we'll uh, let the steam engine go around for one more lap, and then we'll get the uh, V-line locomotive. But uh, after that, I don't see why we can't run a uh, BNSF freight. I just got a DD-40X. I always wanted one of those. Not oh, good for you. Those are uh, terrific engines. You know, I've uh, had a Bachman Centennial since... Uh, I think around 2009, 2009 or 10 is when I got it. It was the same thing. I desperately wanted one of those as a kid. And my parents found one on eBay, and I was so happy with it. And uh, it's probably been my most reliable Bachman engine. It, it had one problem a couple years ago where it was making a clicking noise. So it could have split a gear, but I was also over ballasting my layout. So it's possible some ballast got into the gearbox. But uh, other than that, it hasn't had a single problem. What do you think about scale trains? Uh, I've had a lot of good feedback from people in the community. I've just never actually worked with them myself, so I'm uh, I'm a little less sure. Well, I don't know. I've had a, a couple scale trains products, and they've been fine, but uh, I just don't feel like I've had enough experience with the brand to really judge. Pacific Dash 9. Uh, sure, we'll run the BNSF freight first, though. Have you ever fixed an Atherin DD40? I've worked on a few of them before. Uh, they're pretty good locomotives. Does your layout have power boosters? Uh, no power boosters. I I think on a club layout, power boosters would probably be a good thing. You know, if you're running more than like five locomotives. But uh, generally I find I've been able to uh, get by just using regular train controllers. I mean, as far as running DC equipment goes, this is a pretty beefed out controller. Like you could run six efficient trains um, comfortably with that. And uh, same thing with this controller too, it's a pretty high amp controller, so you're not really gonna run into those sorts of problems. Um, but if you're running a lot of stuff, maybe you would need a booster. Now, I guess we'll maybe just switch it back over to DC and run things that way. I've got one that I'm having a very little trouble finding parts for. Any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Well, if you're if you're talking about a Bachman one, I believe they still sell uh, parts for those. Uh, if you're talking about an Atherin one, the good news is that a lot of locomotives from the same era use cross-compatible parts. So if you need gears and things like that, you can just take those off a of junked Atherin. Um, yeah, it's probably your best bet. Just try to find some junked engines from the same time frame. Because uh, trying to chase down individual parts 
is uh, a nightmare. Like you're just gonna be searching and searching and searching. There might not be anybody selling the parts and if they are selling the parts, they're gonna want an arm and a leg for them. So um, buying junk engines for, you know, a couple bucks is always cheaper than uh, having to look for parts. Seems like the uh, V-Line locomotive has a split a switch, which is kind of weird. I used to have this problem when I was using Atherin switches, but uh, these are locking switches, so I'm kind of surprised it did that. SMT, what's your oldest and newest model? Any gauge or type? Um, I don't know. This this V line engine is probably one of the more modern ones in my collection. The oldest model I have, mm, it might be this uh, Hiawatha, but I have some other engines in the collection which are possibly older. It's kind of hard to say. Huh, it did it again. And this time it split that other switch. Very strange. Cool to have V-Line all the way over there. Yeah, yeah, I've been trying to uh, expand the uh, Australian section of the collection a little bit. I actually have another Australian V-Line locomotive, which I ordered a couple months ago. Uh, I still haven't unboxed it yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a, uh, a CL... CLP-8? I might be mixing that up a bit, but uh, another orange locomotive. Anyways, it was requested that I run a BNSF freight. We've already got one ready to go, so I figure, um, you know, why not run it? I think uh, we're gonna have to find a spot to put these freight cars, though. So let's we'll just put these off to the side, run the freight train out, and then uh, should be on our way. Where's your cat? Uh, probably upstairs. I think he did show up in the last live stream. Do you have any models by Rapido? I've got uh, three Leap Rapido engines. I've got a couple of their uh, FP40s, and I've also got one of their LRC locomotives. So far, uh, I've had pretty good experience with them. I haven't had uh, any problems. Hey, SMT, got any advice for my HO scale layout? Well, for uh, people that watch these live streams, uh, often uh, it might sound like a bit of a broken record, but it really is about just like focusing on making what you truly want. And uh, I find the best way to do that is to create a list. So uh, get yourself a pen and pad. Uh, I can't even speak English anymore. Get yourself some paper and a pen and uh, write everything down and get inspiration from uh, model railroading books and real world locations and stuff. There's all sorts of different ways you can get inspiration and then, you know, figure out what you want and then deduct things off the list based off space and budget. That's my uh, kind of basic rules for building a layout. It's like all these cars somehow got derailed. How old is Nerf Cat? I think he's uh, 15. He was born sometime in the summer of, well, probably the fall of 2008. What's your favorite brand? It might be Rapido, honestly. Um, their prices are kind of high, but I do feel like they make uh, pretty nice products. And, uh, I don't know, I, I just kind of like uh, the way they operate, like uh, Jason Schron, uh, despite Rapido being, you know, one of the more accurate manufacturers, is very, like, lighthearted about the hobby, um, and his message is often, you know, not to take things too seriously and just enjoy it, which is something I think we need more of in the hobby, so, uh, yeah, I respect that, and they also uh, sink a lot of their money into uh, restoring real locomotives, so, yeah, they make a good product, and uh, they seem like genuine trend buffs. There's lots of other good brands out there. It's not the only one. I also really like Walters, Athern. 
uh, Kato. Atlas is pretty good. I don't know. There isn't really a bad one, honestly. Falkman's not my favorite, but they're, they've had a few which I like. How's the O-Gage layout going? I'd say pretty well. It's probably the most functional it has been in the last uh, five years I've had it. How old is your Via Rail uh, P42? I'm guessing it's about 20. Because it, it was an Atherin Blue Box locomotive, and if I'm not mistaken, it's got these steel wheels, so... I think it was definitely a custom paint job, so somebody, probably in the early 2000s, uh, crafted that out of uh, an Amtrak model. Rewired three-pull DC motors was what I meant earlier. Huh. Yeah, um, I, I still, let me see if I can find that spool of wire. Although, it doesn't really matter because you're supposed to use the same size as what was on the motor. Yeah, I can't seem to find it. In terms of modern companies, there really is no bad manufacturer. Not a bad time to be in the community at all. Prices are a bit rough, though. Yeah, that's really my only criticism. Like, in terms of reliability and detail and features, I don't think that there's ever been a better time for model railroading. Now, uh, there are some drawbacks to that. Obviously, uh, older model trains are, um, you know, much more simple. They're easier to work on. And uh, I think they kind of test your creativity a little bit more. You know, it's not that hard to go to a store and buy a fancy train. It is hard to, you know, uh, put together a brass kit and have it run right. But, um, yeah, it's, there's, there's not bad products. The prices are just high. Vintage all the way. I'm thinking of getting to model trains. Do you have any advice or recommendations on what companies I should buy from? Well, as we were just talking about, there isn't really a bad one. I actually did a video uh, a few days ago on uh, buying your first starter set, and I kind of discussed some of the different brands you can buy. So I suggest you go watch that. Um, I, I kind of just share what I think about some of the different sets. My road name is really CN, but I run all sorts of stuff, including British locomotives. Yeah, and that like that's the way that I feel like people should uh, go about it. You know, I'd, uh, I I don't really see the point in restricting yourself uh, just to be realistic. SMT, I got a lock pilot decoder for one of my locomotives and it doesn't work. The locomotive is fine on DC power, but with the decoder it doesn't work. Is there something wrong? Okay, if you've installed the decoder and it's picking up DC power, presumably that means it's been wired correctly. So what I would probably do is make sure your DC C controller is working properly. Um, I've noticed with my Digitrax decoder... Uh, decoders and the controller itself sometimes you just need to do a factory reboot so uh, try that and go from there Ricky M how's it going SMT oh pretty well how are you I was just re-watching the video on the beginner train sets oh that's good to hear I've got everything from Evenson's rocket to the Union Pacific big steam and everything in between Do you like Chuggington? I never really watched Chuggington. I don't know when it came out, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it was more of a kids' show. Uh, maybe I'd outgrown it or something. I, d I just don't really remember watching it as a kid.
I've been collecting trains and scale for about 20 years and never once had them running. I think I'm almost ready to try and build. Kind of scary. I don't know where to begin. Well, I don't know. Maybe just buy yourself some Cato uh, Unitrack or something. Just get yourself a circle just so you can like run them around and then and then go from there. I mean, I don't know. I don't think uh, building a layout has to be overwhelming, but I do see how, you know, you can get kind of caught up in the details. There's nothing wrong, though, with building a layout and then kind of learning from it and just building something else later. I don't find that most people stick with their original layout. They kind of finish constructing their first layout, and then by the time they're done with it, they've learned so much that they uh, want to start all over and build something new. Does the Milwaukee Road Hiawatha run? It's been on that siding, siding for what seems forever. Yeah, uh, the Hiawatha does run. Uh, I just uh, don't run it very often because it's, you know, the most special engine in my collection. But it uh, is in operating condition. I usually oil it up and everything before I go running it, though. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty special, and the parts are super expensive. Is the Tyco Canadiana boxcar rare? No, those are pretty common. They're a little harder to find in the States because they were only sold for the uh, Canadian market, but uh, you can find these things at garage sales and um, on Facebook Marketplace and stuff. I don't know. I feel like everybody has one. What do you think of European brands like uh, Jolif and Roco? Uh, Roco makes good products. Um, they actually made a lot of the products I believe Model Power was selling, and uh, those are pretty solid. Uh, I can't really speak so much for the uh, French manufacturer. I never really owned anything by them, so I'm a little less sure. Actually, I have one TGV engine by them, but it's from the 80s, so uh, yeah, I'm a little less sure. Uh, come to the UK. We have many steam railways. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Could you run your unstoppable locomotives? I'm a big fan, by the way. You're the reason I got into model railroading. E sure, yeah. Let the uh, VNSF freighter go around for one more lap, and then we'll get the uh, 777 on there. Oh, it looks like we got another... Uh, Super chat from Mike. Uh, please run the Bicentennial engine. If you have time tonight, great live. The Bicentennial engine. It must be in the uh, spirit of 76. We can definitely make that happen. Thank you uh, for the super chat. Any updates on the layout recently? Uh, less on the layout and more on the kind of like scene. Like I've added a few more lights and things like that. Nothing too significant. I've just been uh, slowly, you know, ballasting bits of track and stuff. Hey, SMT, do you think Mahana will one day release their classic steam locomotive, such as the 482 or the Hudson? I really wish they would. I wish Mahana would return because they were one of the best budget companies out there. Uh, I not super optimistic about it though. Uh, I don't find that their new releases are as good as their older ones. And uh, I, I'm kind of suspicious they've actually stopped manufacturing stuff because uh, a couple of years ago you were able to buy all sorts of Mahano train sets. They were only sold to the European market, but you could still order them on Amazon and stuff. And if you go to all those listings now, they're out of stock. And the few that are there are way overpriced, so I think they might be new old stock. I hope, I really hope I'm wrong. I don't want uh, Mahano to go out of business. They've uh, had a terrific history, but I think they actually filed for bankruptcy in 2008. So I don't know, the fact that they're still making stuff is kind of odd to begin with. Mahano is good. I wish they were... Uh, well, they, they definitely still exist as a company. I just don't know if they're still making model trains. Like, they have a website and everything. Um, but I just find it weird. Everything's all of a sudden gone out of stock.
Chris Danielle, hey SMT, how do you run DCC and DC on the same layout? Some sort of switch? Yeah, it's a double pull, double throw switch. And uh, I have that wired in down here. So basically how it works is you've got two wires which feed in from the DCC controller and two from the DC controller. And then depending on which side the switch is set to, it will uh, send uh, power to the track. You can't operate them at the same time, but it makes it very easy to uh, switch between the two. Did you ever finish the layout for your friend? Uh, no, that's under construction. Somebody was actually asking me earlier if I can uh, make an update to that. So I'm gonna try to do that as soon as possible. I got a lot of things I need to catch up on. I need to get working on that layout again and I need to get that whole uh, charity thing with the big boy going because that's uh, taken too long as well. That's true, they make those building kits with metal and bolts, don't they? I'm guessing those still exist. Oh, well, um, Meccano definitely still exists. I'm talking about Me Mihano, which is, uh, a S U Yugoslav Yugoslavian? I, I never get the country right. Uh, foreign manufacturer. Uh, not gonna lie, Mihano is pretty bad. My TGV already died after three months of running. It's been sitting years. It's unfortunate. I think their quality has slumped, but that wasn't always the case. Like I've got some Mahano steam engines I got as a kid uh, back when they were selling them as part of the President's Choice train sets. And those things were tanks. I've had so many of those. I've run them for hours and hours and they're still running great. So at one point they were making very high quality products. Do you like Via Rail's new paint job? I don't know if I've seen it. Mahana was still around. They moved their production to China. Huh. What's your favorite TV show? Uh... Probably the Red Green Show. The Red Green Show or maybe the Trailer Park Boys. I'm a huge fan of both of those. I'm definitely missing some, though. There's a, there's a lot of good ones out there. What are all of you watching? I'd love to hear it. I'll put it down in the comments. Slovenia. Okay. Model Power AHM and River Rossi were made in Yugoslavia. That's that's partially true, although, uh, as I was saying earlier, Roco uh, actually produced engines for Model Power, which were made in Austria, and River Rossi, for most of its history, was made in Italy, so... It's partially true. Trailer Park Boys, Star Trek. Watching from Victoria, BC. Oh, I got somebody from the other side of the country. My favorite shows are Red Green or uh, Red Green, uh, Red Dwarf, and Doctor Who. SMT, have you seen an Amtrak uh, P32 AC DM? Uh, I didn't know Amtrak owned any P32s. Where are you in Canada? Warm regards from Western Australia. I'm in uh, Gatineau, Quebec. 
which is right beside our nation's capital, Ottawa. SMT, I at one point owned the Spirit of 76 Diesel, an old neighbor. My favorite TV show is The Simpsons. Can you please run an American steam locomotive? Sure, I'll also go uh, look for the uh, Spirit of 76 as requested by uh, Mike earlier. Might need some guidance from all of you in terms of which American steam engine I should run. As I'm just realizing most of my American steam engines seem to be broken. Uh, the Dreyfus does run, but this one's broken. This one's broken, and this one's broken. So, those are, well, I guess the big boy works, so that's always an option. I don't know. First one request I see for whichever steam engine I'll run it. Daylight. The daylights don't work. Years ago, I got to meet, meet both Harold and Red. They were just as funny in person as they were in the show. That's good to hear. It's nice when, uh, I don't know, if people kind of live up to their name. Ron at Classic Model Trains did a live show and he said that he got into doing repair videos on trains after watching one of your videos. Huh, I wasn't aware of that, that's cool. Tom Jones, thank you so much for the very generous uh, super chat. Uh, hello from Nevada, really enjoy your rebuild videos, help me many times. Closest train stores are four hours away, keep up the good work. Well, that's quite the road trip, but uh, thank you for the super chat. Have you ever rode on a plane before? I've uh, been on quite a few planes before. I don't know, I probably fly like three times a year. Um, so back onto this, run the Hiawatha, bingo. Is the brass daylight broken? Uh, yeah, it is, it's just a wire. The wire between the locomotive and the tender broke off again so i just need to resolder it so it's nothing serious very minor repair but still How many Santa Fe flyers do you have? Uh, probably about five uh, super chief locomotives. Norman, Corey Harrison, my offer, I'm building you a chassis for your daylight still stands. You got me back into the hobby. It's the least I can do. Well, thanks for the offer. I'm pretty happy uh, currently with the uh, brass locomotive. I just need to figure out how to get that wire working. I don't know. I just never really found... Uh, Unless you're talking about using a River Rossi chassis, I never really found the Bachman ones work that well. A lot of people have told me over the years, too, that, I don't know, it's not about the Bachman engines, it's about my track. But, you know, after seeing that uh, brass engine I bought recently, being able to go around the 22 radius curves, I'm starting to become skeptical of that. 
How has the Fox Valley Hiawatha held up? Overall, it's uh, not too bad. I've had a couple minor problems with it uh, derailing, and I find the wires get caught up. They're not very well organized, but uh, other than that, it's been pretty good. Hey, SMT, well, Tyco locomotives are not the best, except for Mantua's. What's your opinion on their rolling stock and operating accessories? Uh, they're pretty similar in quality, to be honest. I mean, rolling stock is it's kind of hard to be unreliable, just because all it has to do is, you know, stay coupled and roll along the track. Um, replacing the wheels with metal wheels certainly helps, and installing KD coupler boxes will improve them. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Everything by Tyco is never really the best quality. I still really enjoy buying old Tyco stuff. I find it's fun to work on, but if you're looking for something you can like really count on every time, probably not the right place to look. Harrison, thanks for running a live stream tonight. Really enjoyed the video of the rusted locomotive soaked in vinegar. You got running again. Thanks, that was a fun project. Other than eBay, where do you buy your trains? Uh, mostly... Mostly hobby shops, I would say. Whenever train shows come around, I'll stock up on different things, but uh, mostly eBay and train stores. Have you ever been scammed on eBay looking for a model train? If so, how do you avoid it? I've been uh, swindled a couple times on eBay. Um, the good news with eBay is that they will usually side with the seller if you have a problem. So a couple of years ago, I did this video where uh, I uh, bought a, um, I don't know, I think it was, it's, I want to say Hobby Town. It was a Varney. It was a Varney F unit. And the seller said that it was in perfect working order and it ran for 10 seconds before the motor burnt up. And I paid $40 for that, you know, believing it was in working order. So I filed a, well, I didn't file a dispute. You usually just contact the seller. So I contacted the seller. I explained the situation. They said that they were willing to refund me if I shipped the engine back. I didn't want to do that. So I just asked if they'd be willing to do a partial refund, and they did. Um, but uh, most of the time, you, you just, the, the big thing is when you're buying something on eBay, you've got to make sure that you're, like, checking the description and everything else to make sure that they are actually claiming that whatever it is is in working order. Because if they say, you know, it's sold as is or something and there's a problem with it, there's not really anything you can do. Um, but if they claim something's perfect and it's not, then you've uh, got some grounds to, uh, to go after them. Why not take the junk F unit and turn it into the Swayze Express? I'm looking to build a Swayze Express. I, I have the locomotive set aside. The only problem is that trying to assemble that kind of paint scheme wouldn't be very easy. I don't really know uh, if anybody makes decals and would know how to do something like that, but uh, that's really the only drawback. Kind of sounds like the train cars are hitting something out there, but I, I, I can't see what. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I guess we'll get this running now. The 
Just see if this actually even runs anymore. That was weird. Just gonna quickly go and try to see what these cars are bumping into. train like a little bit slower and hopefully it will reveal itself. Could just be a nail. Yep, that's our problem. I don't know why this one corner is having more issues than the rest of the trackage, but for some reason this section keeps lifting, so I'm gonna this all has to be redone. This part of the track is kind of junk, so it's not a big deal, but uh, it's just kind of an unusual problem. Have you ever had a fire on your layout? Uh, I've had a lot of motor burnouts over the years, um, which have resulted in, you know, a lot of smoke and everything, but uh, none of them have actually uh, gone into flames. I did have a motor catch fire in my hand once, but that was kind of my fault. Yeah, this really could use the surfacing, but I'll just roll with it. Doesn't have a couple either. Okay. I don't think that one's gonna work. Let me go try to find another. Okay, I think we found a lively one. What's your opinion on the Bluebell Railway? I've always wanted to go. I've never heard of the Bluebell Railway. I don't know anything about it. Not running very well. I've got one of these engines with an MU2 motor. I have a feeling that one will work a little bit better. It was being stored here, but as I was talking about earlier, I've reorganized everything and now I can't seem to locate stuff. 
So it's probably over here. Here it is. I would probably argue that out of all the uh, Spirit of 76 engines, this one might be the most patriotic just because it's actually American made. See if it makes it through this time. Yeah, it does. She's a runner. Yeah, exactly. This goes to show you how tough these uh, Mantua Tycos are. This one's been sitting for months. You know, put it on the track, give it some power, and within like a minute, it's right back to life. bad spot on the track yeah i think it has something to do with uh this crossing because it's, it's running fine on all the, all the rest of it so yeah i'm not blaming the engine for this one i paid like i don't know 10 or 15 dollars for it which it's kind of obvious why the condition is pretty bad but i don't know i feel sort of uh sentimental just because like this thing clearly, you know, had a, a lot of use over the years and the fact that it's, you know, still running is, I think, quite impressive. Maybe try to buy some parts for it. I could actually, you know, do a full on cosmetic restoration. It's never gonna be perfect, but that's okay. Can you run both DC and ECC on your track? You can, you just can't uh, run them at the same time. Or you can run uh, DCC engines on DC, and vice versa. You can run a DC engine on DCC. It's just not ideal. Is Tyco still going? I think that they went out of business in 1993. I don't know. They haven't been around for a while. Just too bad. I think that they made some of the most interesting locomotives out there, but... I think their biggest problem was they might have cut a few too many corners in terms of quality. These old Manoas, those are good, but the power torques were not so reliable, and I think it might have ruined their reputation. Do you know of any resources for undercarriage for rolling stock? I'd prefer getting new rather than fixing the previous owner's experimental mods. Um, Rapido sells uh, wheel sets and you can buy replacement trucks. I don't know if you can find replacement chassis for rolling stock, though. I've yet to see that. Mattel took them over. Oh, is that what happened? They're bought out in 1997. Hello, some tea. I made a video on decaling. I said I would do an on stream a while back. I also need some help with my lifelike spirit of 76. It keeps bouncing on the track. Any ideas what the issue could be? Uh, with the lifelike, my money would probably be on the traction tires. If those get messed up, it will cause funny things like that to happen.
Can you tell me which brand I should buy a Centennial from? I don't know what to buy. I know there's variety, but some are obviously going to be better than others. I've never owned any... I've owned the uh, DD40s, but I've never owned the full Centennial from Athern, so I can't really speak for it. I have had a Bachman Centennial for many years, and it's been very good. I was talking about that one earlier, actually. The only thing you have to be careful is not to buy... I wouldn't buy a used one just because you don't want to end up buying one of the ones from the 80s or 90s because those used to use a very unreliable drive system and they're going to be full of problems. So, uh, yeah, the Bachman ones are fine, but just, just make sure you get a modern one. I may as well ask, but I have older Atherin SPGP38 that has a weird problem. It runs fine for a bit, but then starts making a not good sound when it slows down a bunch. Any ideas what it could be? Um, so if it's, if it's accelerating fine, but it's making weird noises when it's slowing down, my guess would be that the flywheels have probably become unmounted. They're, uh, kind of set on a piece of plastic and I've, I've seen it happen on a couple of the older Atherins where um, that adhesion or however it was fit just uh, kind of it, it snaps off and then the flywheels loose and then that will make some weird grinding noises and stuff so uh, that's probably where I'd look for problems What's your favorite model in your collection? Mine's a small logging locomotive I have in mine. Uh, probably my Swedish E2 engine or my uh, Hiawatha here. I remember that set ran on model racing track instead of HO track, the Tyco Turbo Train. Oh no, the, the Tyco Turbo Train ran on a conventional HO scale track, but the chassis for the locomotive was uh, a slot car. So yeah, it was a pretty, pretty funky train set. I actually have uh, two Tyco Turbo Trains. Um, I haven't taken them out of the box since 2015 or so because i don't really know where i'd set them up but um it might make an interesting video i feel like a lot of people probably haven't seen those do you think one day you'll buy a Joliet f steam locomotive like a 241p uh, or a 414 they're quite beautiful i'm open to it i'd love to try out the brand Do you have any tips for kit bashing and decaling your own models? I want to make my own uh, rendition of a Magma Arizona 7. Tips in decaling your own models. I'm not really sure. I don't know. I don't, I don't do a lot of that stuff. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I've, 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 I've done kit bashing before. I mean, I kit bashed this entire factory, but uh, whenever I'm making uh, like an HO scale locomotive, it's always random. I wish I had some advice. I don't know. Maybe some of the people in the comments will have something better. What was your first ever layout? It was this uh, layout right here. It doesn't really look like it did back when uh, I first got into model railroading, but um, yep, same layout I've always had.
What would you be able to... Would you be able to run the Tyco Milwaukee E8? Yeah, sure. When did you start building your layout? Uh, construction started in 2007. Uh, it was this section right here. And then uh, later on, this was added, and then this was added, and uh, most recently, the Hershey factory was added. All about five years apart, so 2007, 2012, 2017 or 16, and uh, this right here in about 2020. Where did the crossing signal come from? It was a gift from my uh, grandparents. My birthday was approaching, and uh, they said, we've got two options. Either we can go on a road trip to Merrickville, or we found these really cool signal lights, and I was like, oh, the signal lights. So anyways, I, I just thought I was getting these two lights, but um, uh, being the wonderful people they are, they went and they actually built this whole, uh, you know, crossing and stuff themselves and wired it all up and everything. It was a terrific gift. I was so surprised. I really was not expecting that. Trailer Park Boys needs a new season. I wish they would make more episodes, but... Uh, John Dunsworth, who is uh, Jim Lee on the show, is no longer with us, unfortunately. So I think that that's probably what's holding them back. And they made an animated series for a while. It wasn't you know, as good, but uh, yeah, hopefully they'll continue with something. Anyways, I'm just going to go find that uh, Taika We 8 Hey, SMT, do you have a Milwaukee Road Skytop lounge car? No, but I'm on the market for one. I, if I find one for a good price, I'll definitely buy one. I'm clearing out an area for on the layout. It's pretty small. I have an HO scale train. Any suggestion what I should do? Well, I don't know. Without seeing the space, it's kind of hard to say, but um, I don't know. Let's, uh, as I say for building a layout, go online and get some uh, inspiration. There's got to be something you can do. I find even the smallest of spaces on a layout can be an opportunity to uh, create a scene of some sort. I'll get this thing running and then I'll explain that. Like, uh, this area right here, I didn't really think that that was usable space for everything. For years, this was just ballasted behind the buildings because with these two tracks, you can't really add another switch there. And then uh, this one night I was just uh, up late and I was working on the layout and I put down a piece of track there and I was like, wait a minute, we can add a abandoned track and then it doesn't actually have to work, but it will create an entire scene. Are you a fan of Letter Kenny or Shorzy? I haven't seen Shorzy, but I have seen Letter Kenny, and uh, yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm, I think that the show is uh, hugely entertaining. Um, you know, it might not be everybody's favorite show if you're not into uh, vulgar humor, but uh, I think it's hilarious. I don't know how they come up with their lines, but uh, it's almost mind-boggling. Any tips on soldering? Uh, use lots of flux. Make sure, yeah, clean, clean up the surfaces and then add flux. When I was younger, I didn't know you had to use flux, and so I'd never get a, a proper uh, connection with it. Have you ever thought about giving your bridges some supports? Uh, not too worried about it. They're all pretty strong. Greetings from France. Can you run a BL2 with some matching coaches? Uh, I can definitely run a BL2. I don't know if I have any uh, matching coaches for it, however. The reason I got into model railroading is my favorite thing I've done. I just want to say thank you. Well, that's excellent to hear. I think that this is a great hobby to be part of. So if this channel is directed anybody in the hobby's direction, it means a lot to hear that. BL2 is a switcher. 
It is? I'm confused. Hold on a moment. I thought a BL2 was one of those kind of off looking, like it, it's sort of a similar size to an F unit, but different cab. I might be mixing stuff up, I don't know. BL2 locomotive. Yeah. Go see if we can find one of the BL2s. I haven't run one in a long time, so. Hmm. Hey SMT, can you please check out the video on decals, give feedback after the live stream. It also helped me get into model railroading. Yeah, I'll try to have a look for that. Um, just going to quickly see if the BL2 is behind here. Yeah, sorry, I can't seem to find any of the BL2 engines. Should run the Hershey train, sure. I believe one of the Hershey engines is in this section here. inner city one two five well we'll add that to the queue as well right now i just want to find the hershey's engine i know there's an inner city one two five but that's actually a dummy unit uh yeah i don't know not seeing it it's probably one of these things where it's right in front of me and i'm just not noticing unless i moved it over here somewhere here's one of the hershey's locomotives I don't know. This will be good enough for now. Actually, I'm pretty sure I remember where the BL, or not the BL2, but where the Hershey's engine's at. I think it's beside the factory. Oh, yes it is.
Can you run the Krauss Mafia? You have one with the freight cars. Yeah, sure. Try to find the inner city 125 first. Hershey factory looks good, thanks. Can't seem to locate the inner city 125, but here's the uh, Krauss Mafia locomotive. Do you have any idea where I can find express coaches? I'm not sure. some electrical issues, but we'll I'll just try to send it anyway. I'm surprised you haven't got any Thomas DC engines or Gordon. I don't know. I'm not really interested in buying any of the uh, Thomas and Friends stuff. I'm not against the show or anything. I really enjoyed it as a kid, but I just don't really... Uh, feel the need to add it to the layout. Oh no. <laughs> SMT, if Hershey's is going back to the factory, they need to use your video as a promotion. You did a great job on that project, thanks. I don't know, I, I tried to contact them a couple months ago and I contacted them on two or three different platforms. I contacted them on Twitter and on their Instagram and uh, by email and I never heard back from them. So, I don't know, we'll see. I'm in full support of them coming back to town. I think that's some of the best news that there has been in a while for Smith Falls. Uh, I think everybody is in the community is, you know, open arms in terms of uh, Hershey's coming back, but it would be nice if they would uh, acknowledge this place. I don't know. Maybe some of you out there know. How do you get a corporation's attention? Have you heard about the recently restored Krauss Mafia? No, I haven't actually. That's uh, great to hear. Smith Falls sounds like a town in a movie. Yeah, it does kind of have a, I don't know, the intro. The story started in Smith Falls, Ontario, something like that. Anyways, I found the uh, inner city 125. It was over on the other layout, so. We can run that now.
Can you please run the blue and yellow Santa Fe engine? When I got in the starter set? Must be over on this shelf. Well, I can't find the exact one, so we're just gonna run this 1950s version of it. I think it still works. I haven't run this engine in an awful long time. Hey, SMT, how do you protect your engines from bugs and critters? I don't know. I've never really had a problem with uh, bugs getting in the locomotives. I mean, they're all plastic. There's not really much they'd be interested in. Uh, there, there are bugs down here. I have a bit of a problem with spiders. Uh, got a lot of spiders always crawling around and stuff like that. But uh, it's never affected any of my equipment. As far as I'm concerned, too, the spiders are good because they're probably going to help, like, get rid of some of the other bad bugs, like the mosquitoes and stuff that get in here. So that's all fine. Mostly I have hand-me-down stuff. Never really had the money to get more DCC locomotives. Well, there's nothing wrong with old DC locomotives. They're super reliable, and I find you can have just as much fun with them as you do with uh, the DCC ones. I mean, I've got a few sound locomotives, but I don't know. More often than not, I'm running an old DC engine than uh, one of those sound-equipped ones. Passenger cars for the Hiawatha are not easy to find when you do. They're expensive. I had to scratch build mine. I've got one for the Hiawatha, uh, which I found for 40 bucks at a train show, but... Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Well, it's a little bit noisy and wobbly, but it's started right up on the first try, so not too bad for an engine from like 1957. I find DC is easier to work on. There are less wires. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any videos on how to weather freight cars? Uh, I haven't done any videos about it, but I've got a technique which is really easy. Sorry, I have a Santa Fe engine I did a weathering uh, job on a while ago. And I'm just looking for it so I can explain what I did. I just looked on the other shelf and I feel like it's still on there somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, I can't seem to find it, but uh, the short of it is that you just buy yourself cans of uh, matte finish brown spray paint or black spray paint, and you just kind of just coat the outside of whatever it is you're painting, and uh, it's usually not that bad. Actually, I did a few of my cars here, so 
See how it's just like the, the cars look a little bit dusty? I just took a, a can of matte finish um, light brown spray paint and just from a distance, just little spritzes. And, you know, I, I don't find it's that bad and it's ridiculously easy to do, you know? It's not something that requires a whole lot of skill. So for me, that's a good thing. Here's uh, another engine which I weathered, and uh, what I did with this one was the same thing. Just took some spray paint, just lightly, just kind of dusted the sides a little bit. Although for uh, this one, I, I actually got a little bit creative, and I pulled the exhaust stack out, and uh, I took a lighter, and I actually burned some oil, and let it the smoke kind of wick up, just to really get. A uh, nice kind of carbon sooty look. And nothing looks more realistic than real soot. Can run the Burlington Northern GP30. Yeah, sure. A Santa Fe Warbird, that's what the Thayer sub crews called the ex-Santa Fe units. The outcome is very good. I'm glad you think so. I mean, there are some people that can certainly do uh, higher quality work, but hey, for not a lot of money, you know, one can of spray paint can certainly get quite a bit done, especially if you're dealing with cheap engines. I mean, why not? Okay, so uh, the Bachman engine seems to be having a bit of a bad day. Oh, there we go. Do you have a military train? I do. Um, it was all stuff from my uh, dad's original collection. This engine's clearly in poor uh, condition. I'm gonna try running a different one.
Now this one runs like a million times better. Hey, and check it out, it doesn't derail. Thinking about visiting Expo Rail soon. Should I go? Absolutely, I think it's a terrific museum. If you've never been there, I highly suggest it. SMT, thanks for the channel. Helps me fix a lot of my locomotives. Hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Hey, Harrison, model train question for you. I have an SKH32AC American Flyer. The tender clicks over when it is powered, but it does not run. Any ideas? The tender click. Okay, so it's an AC locomotive. Um, I don't know as much about AC stuff, if I'm honest with you. If it's making a clicking noise, my guess is that there's some sort of a, um, a solenoid which should be making a connection. Now, if you're hearing clicking, it sounds like power should be getting through, but I'd open it up and just make sure whatever um, is supposed to make contact, because I know with some AC locomotives, it's almost like uh, you've got the drum, let's say it's this, and you've got the piece which the power flows through, and sometimes after years of the clicking, it can actually uh, cause a carbon buildup. So that's probably where I'd look first. Um, I wish I could give you more detailed advice, but uh, this is a little harder to tell. I don't know if American Flyer engines have an E-unit. I know the Lionel ones do, so. If there's something similar to an E-unit, like a drum which has to rotate, definitely check that out too. It's probably just carbon buildup on something. As in the reversing unit clicks over, meaning it cycles. Okay, so it does have a E-unit. Um, Yeah, if that's the case, I'd probably check the brushes on the motor, because if, if the E-unit is working properly, power should be getting to the motor. It could just be an issue with the brushes. Will you do a giveaway? Uh, I'm supposed to do a giveaway raffle. It's not really a giveaway. It's a raffle for a uh, big boy locomotive some kind of charity thing i'm not sure what yet though uh, and uh i also just bought a massive lot of locomotives so as i fix those up i'm gonna do some sort of a giveaway kind of like i did with the last uh make a lot of locomotives Hey Harrison, what are your opinions on AHM locomotives? In my opinion, they suck because I bought a C liner and a C424 and they both burnt out in two days. Uh, they're not the highest quality engines, but I've had pretty good experience with them. Uh, the motors, unfortunately, are the weak point, so I'm not entirely surprised to hear about yours burning out, but um, I, it's really the commutators. It's the commutators that always seem to be the failure point. I think they're just a little bit too small. But nine times out of ten, when you have a, a motor which starts smoking, it's because there's a carbon buildup between the little um, gaps on the motor. Um, a Dundas Junction actually told me what the gaps on the motor are called. I think like graphite. I have to ask them. But anyways, the little gaps on the uh, commutator, try cleaning those out because most of the time you do that, the motor will come right back to life. In almost every motor, this is what fails first. It's the commutator, these little gaps. They get all buggered up with carbon and then you're gonna have big problems. So try cleaning that out. Maybe you can revive those engines. I feel like getting a Bradford Exchange, especially for the NHL cars, because my dad's a big ha uh, fan of the Leafs. I mean, yeah, why not? Sounds like fun. I mean, personally, I probably wouldn't get a Leafs thing, but uh, to each their own. Hey, Harrison, I recently started getting into the hobby a few months ago. Do you have any good tips for building a good layout? Put together a list, man. Uh, Figure out what you want, go get some inspiration and uh, compile it all. That way you have a sense of direction on where to go with it. 
And then you just have to deduct things off the list based off of how much space you have and uh, what your budget is. Do you have anything Western Pacific in your collection? Uh, I think I do, actually. Let's go have a look for it. You should see if you could acquire some Amtrak coaches for the Cascades Taligo set. I've had them here in Portland and Seattle. Very interesting train sets. I've seen those before. There's a famous video of uh, somebody racing one of those around their club layout. Uh, Pacific Western. Well, it's not Pacific Western, but it's Western Pacific, so we'll go with that. Hey, SMT, what are some ways to make roads? You get yourself a drywall plaster from the hardware store, and you find yourself some uh, matte finish black paint and some matte finish white paint. And you put, the, you put down your drywall plaster, you get it as even as you can, uh, add any cracks or what have you to make it look aged, sand it down a little bit, just make it a little bit smoother, and then just uh, paint it with uh, a mix of the black and white paint to get the correct color of gray that you're looking to have. Getting inspiration from random boxes of model trains is amazing. That's actually a really cool idea. Just buy a box of random trains and, you know, somebody's old collection or something, and then you don't even have to come up with an idea. You can just kind of work with what you have. That's, uh, that's a unique idea. Have you ever heard of the Adaville Railroad? I wish I have. Unfortunately, I haven't. Well, apparently that still works. Elephant gray paint works well from what I've heard, Walmart brand. Yeah, I would believe it. The biggest thing is that you have to have a matte finish because uh, I find what I see a lot of people doing is they just use whatever paint they have. And, you know, that's fine if you just want to make a road, but I don't find that gloss finish paints look very realistic. I mean, tar, you know, asphalt roads are, are pretty dull looking. Um, so, yeah, use a, a matte finish. It makes all the difference. The Western Pacific received six GS6s from Southern Pacific. They became GS64s and they looked amazing. They had elephant ears and a couple of differences. Would love to see you make a video on one. Well, that's the first I've actually heard of that, so uh, thanks for letting me know. What's the furthest south you've been? California. Yeah, I think it'd be California. How do you fix Bachman quartering issues? Well, you can remove the wheels and you can throw some CAs in the, the little pockets that hold the wheels together. Uh, quartering is a complicated process. I'm not really sure how to do it properly, but uh, idea of it is that you need the drivers on uh, both sides to be exactly 90 degrees apart and if they're not 90 degrees apart the wheels will bind so i've i've successfully done it just from playing around with it but um you know i i don't i don't have a specific technique i think one of your trains is squeaking ah uh, yeah it's those well cars Can you run a New Haven F7? Yeah, sure.
If you're applying your own decals, you'll want to spray the model with gloss coat for them to adhere properly, then hit it with a dull coat to seal them after the decals have been set. Western Pacific GS64s were number 481 and 486. None survived today, but there is a tender left from uh, 484 in California. I have two videos of her running through the line. I lived near my whole life. Very cool stuff. Can you please run the Amtrak Surfliner? I don't think I have one. Uh-uh. Some Tiki, and please run both your Centennials. Uh, I'll run one of them. You'll also want to use a decal setting solution. The decals can get into the nooks and crannies before applying the dull coat. I just realized the Hiawatha with the intermodal has never seen that before. Any chance you'd run that Western Pacific engine? I just tried to run it on the inside loop and it wasn't having it. So I think I've probably got to do some maintenance on it or something. I will try to run this uh, Centennial though. Do you keep every single engine that you get from collectors and other things, or do you get rid of some of it? Always wondered about that. Uh, I do uh, get rid of some of the stuff that I buy, so some of the uh, mega lots off eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Um, I will resell a small portion of that on, uh, well, not on anything. I'll just sell it to uh, a local hobby store. But I don't know. I think a lot of it I, I try to just kind of, giveaway and stuff because i know there are some people out there that want some of the things that i buy off ebay and stuff and you know if i already have a copy of the model hey why not give it to somebody who actually wants it i don't know i feel like there's a lot of people out there who have been uh very generous you know uh, like sending me lots of trains and things like that so that's why i like to do little giveaways just try to pay it forward SMT, do you have any tips on starting a layout? I'd figure out what you want, uh, first of all. I've said this a couple times throughout the live stream that I think that, you know, it's really important to put together some kind of a list before you go ahead just to get some sort of a sense of direction and then just kind of go from there.
What are your thoughts on Indian food? I like it. Got a place in uh, Ottawa called Folly. They sell some great stuff. Hmm. The Centennial ran out of power. That's weird. How's Nerf Cat? I think he's doing pretty well. I just watched the Rusty Locomotive video, not too shabby. I'm glad you uh, and, uh, enjoyed it. We're on the Kool-Aid train, please. Sure. Hey, some TV. Stick two Pop Tarts to Nerf Cat, you'll get Nyan Cat. I haven't heard anybody talk about Nyan Cat since like 2011. I can't believe that meme is still going. Do you have any RF-16 shark noses? If so, can you run some? Uh, I've got a few sharks. Yeah, let's have a look. Hey, Harrison, do you think that $10 is a good price for a Bachman Chessy F7? I suspect that it's brand new because it ran amazingly and the wheels barely even have a speck of dirt on them. Yeah, $10 seems fair for one of those, uh, especially if it's in good shape. Uh, yeah, if you want it, go for it. Probably, uh, I mean, even if it does turn out to be junk, you know, $10 is not the biggest loss. Like, those engines are worth more in parts uh, than they are, you know? So, yeah, take the risk. Just buy it. Uh, SMT, how do you find these mythical eBay lots? I find they're super expensive. Also, what terms do you search for to get better results? I usually just search for, like, HO scale locomotives lot. Uh, sometimes I add, uh, repair to the end, uh, just so that, because most lots that are junked are listed as parts of repair. Sometimes I add the word junk. Um, I don't know. I just play around with the tags until I find stuff, but it's very rare these days that i find one at a good price years ago you could you could find these massive lots really cheap and i find the prices have skyrocketed uh there have actually been some people who have accused me of being part of the problem there which you know i don't know if that's true or not but um yeah they're it's hard to find them cheap now Anyways, here are all my uh, shark noses. I think that this would probably be the best one to run. Hey, SMT, do you have layout plans for the layout? And if you do, can you show them? My biggest plan at the moment is to uh, rebuild the curves over there. And um, I'm going to add a switch right there. So we'll have uh, one extra track on the outside, which will uh, connect it back here. And then these two curves will be pushed back. And then this section right here will be used to uh, construct a shopping center. Uh, that's... Yeah, that's the main thing right now. What's your most crusty locomotive? It probably is the uh, rust, rusty one I just fixed the other day. Yeah, 
in the future, are you gonna have to buy a house and move out and fill it with trains and trains of every kind? Well, I do intend to move out in the next couple of years, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It kind of depends on what kind of place I get, I guess. Are you planning on constructing another layout? Uh, well, I'm going to probably make a part two to uh, the layout construction over there, but... Um, I don't know. The only other layout I think that I might build for a video is uh, a lot of people have been saying, you know, hey, SMT, uh, I'm really into trains. I, I like model railroading, but I don't have enough space. What do you do? So I think I'm going to do a series about, um, you know, how you can be creative with space and build a layout in not a lot of room. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's really the plan I have. Are you going to college or uni? I'm going into cybersecurity to fund this hobby. Uh, not currently, no. Nothing at the moment. A deep, large basement like a tunnel. Well, there's a creative idea, you know, if you don't have space in your apartment to build a layout, just move down into the storm drains and set up a layout there. The city will love you. SMT, do you play an instrument? Because I play a tender saxophone and, uh, it's pretty easy after two and a half years of practice. I l was learning how to play the piano for a little while, but, uh, that sort of fell by the wayside, unfortunately. Still know uh, how to play some uh, songs like uh, Marshmallow World by uh, Dean Martin and stuff, you know, just so that you know, it's Christmas time and people are around, you know, you've got something to play. I'm not particularly good at it, but uh, it's a fun trick, I guess. I got a lot of three custom made doodle bugs for $45 off eBay. I'll send you a picture of them. You should create a second channel on how to build and design a second. Well, I don't really see why I need another channel for that, but uh, I think I probably will start a new video series on how to build layouts and things like that on a budget. There's lots of videos on how to build layouts and uh, that's all good, but you know, um, in terms of building a layout with like used materials and stuff, I don't find there's so much content around that. So I think that that would be a good thing to uh, share my thoughts on. What happened to the project layout you started? Well, nothing's happened to it. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about that. I'm going to do an update, but uh, I don't know. It's funny. I've, some people are like, do you even still have it? And uh, it's right over there. And it's actually got some uh, buildings and stuff I've managed to uh, acquire for it. Um, a couple months ago, I did a video where uh, I was unboxing an old collection and uh, there was uh, this building right here in it, and it was in a horrible condition. Water had gotten on it and it had ruined the roof. So I've repainted the roof on that. I rebuilt the smokestacks and stuff. So slowly just been collecting things. So in the next video, I want to uh, finish off the track work. I want to solder everything up. I want to ballast it. I want to add some detail and I want to add some buildings. It's probably going to be a three-part video series, but the second video I think is really going to cover a lot in terms of uh, construction. Speaking of small space, I just recently started building a portable N-scale layout. It's roughly the size of a circle of track that you'll get in a Bachman set. It's going to be battery powered. That's a good idea. I don't know. I know some people years ago, it was a big trend, I think, with Z-scale to build a, a suitcase layout. Or not a suitcase, but a briefcase layout, which is sort of a unique idea. Have you ever been shocked? Uh, yeah, I've been electrocuted a few times. Uh, I've got some static shocks and stuff like that from the layout, but uh, nothing too significant. I think the, the worst shock I ever received was when I was working on an outboard motor and I wasn't getting spark on a cylinder and I pulled the plug, which, which wasn't giving it spark and then it electrocuted me. So uh, that wasn't too fun, but 
other than that, uh, it was good. Are you saving video outtakes as you go? Uh, that's all behind the scenes, the restoration of the buildings. The track work and everything else is probably going to uh, be included, though. Electrocuted implies you're dead, but you're clearly not. Well, I think electrocuted just means that, like, if you got shocked in the past, you would, you know, have been electrocuted. I don't know. I've never heard anything about it implying that you're, you've been eliminated. If you were in a situation where you had to pick three model trains to save from your collection, which would you pick? Uh, the Hiawatha, my first lifelike, and I don't know, the, the Mahano bullet nose, maybe. You would not save the brass 484. I mean, I, I don't know. Just because I wouldn't save it doesn't mean I don't care about it. It's a terrific locomotive, but, um, you know, I'd, you can buy another one of those. You can't really buy this specific Hiawatha, you know. This is the one that's been in my family for almost like 70 years. And you know, the first, yeah, I don't know. There, there are certain engines that, are kind of a particular way and you can't find a replacement of you could definitely find another northern it would suck i mean those northerns are really expensive but it's uh sort of a funny thing you know i've i've got engines in my collection like my very first lifelike locomotive which if i tried to sell that thing at a train show i don't think it would even fetch like ten dollars like it's so junky it's a terrible engine um but if somebody offered me a thousand dollars for it i wouldn't take the offer um it's just, uh, it's too nostalgic. You know, it's, uh, there's the monetary value and then there's the value you, you have, I guess, in your heart. I don't know. I thought about the brass unit too. Well, the brass unit would be the, one of the smarter ones to pick up because it's, again, uh, it's worth more, but nostalgia. Having said that, the Hiawatha wouldn't be a bad choice because if, if you were looking at it like let's say you put all the nostalgia and everything else uh aside and you're just looking at it from a monetary standpoint uh this would be worth more than the uh brass engine do you have a job besides youtube uh kind of i don't have like uh like i'm self-employed so i do odd jobs and uh, I like uh, restoring all sorts of things so like I fix up old boat motors and things like that and uh, sell off the parts and so on and I do lots of odd jobs um, building furniture and things like that but uh, I'm not in an organization at the moment you went through a lot to get that one right uh, if you're talking about the Hiawatha, it, it's been in the family, so I didn't have to really go anything to get it, but, uh, the, uh, yeah, the Northern engine, that one was, uh, oh, I don't know, probably two weeks wages or something. It's not the kind of money I usually spend on a locomotive like that, but it's one I've wanted for a long time, so I just figured, ah, let's just go for it. I build furniture, too. Yeah, 
There we go. What's the most tragic thing that's ha happened to one of your locomotives? Uh, I don't know if tragic's the right word, but I, there was that time there was that girl who came down here and she picked up my Acela and threw it at the wall and it broke into a bunch of pieces, but I don't know. that. I mean, that sucked, but I'm, I don't feel uh, like a victim of that or anything like that. If anything, it's kind of funny. Like, I just put it back together and it's all good. I think this has gotten stuck. Gotta love a cell of flashbacks. Do you still have it? Yeah, I still have it. Still running, uh, to my knowledge, as well. But yeah, I don't know what it is about that Acela. Like, the, f <laughs> I, the first day I got it, it didn't run right out of the box. It was a brand new model. And then a few months later, uh, the girl threw it at the wall and it broke. And then uh, a couple years after that, I was running it a little too fast around one of the corners and it flew off the track and then broke again. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Have you tried the magnet system to move automobiles? Um, no, I can't say I have. I love the things you do. You're such an inspiration. You've helped me with my HO scale layout and servicing locomotives. Thank you so much. I'm in CSX territory. Do you ever run CSX power? Yeah, we can run a CSX locomotive. Uh, I think I'm gonna end off the live stream pretty soon because uh, it's approaching 11 and uh, I would probably run it later but there are people trying to sleep upstairs which probably don't really appreciate me running this stream but uh yeah we'll run a couple more hopefully my phone doesn't run out of power it keeps giving me uh, battery low lights Why are there trees in the tiny table? That uh, is actually a really small uh, end scale layout. So I thought the freight train was a little bit too heavy, but I guess something else has gone wrong with the uh, CSX locomotive. The headlight's on, it's getting power. There we go. Doesn't seem like... Uh, in the best operating condition, if I'm honest here. It's, a it's not a dead spot. If it was a dead spot in the track, the lights would shut off, but it's clearly getting power. So I, I think it's more likely that there's a slight incline or something here, and maybe uh, it's not getting traction.
Favorite song, uh, Run to You by Brian Adams. Wow. <laughs> Trying to run for your audience is how you find operational problems. It seems to be. Uh, I don't find I have as many problems when uh, I'm running the trains on my own, but I guess I'm also just not changing up locomotives and stuff as much, so maybe that's why uh, I'm always discovering f funny things about the layout. I hope this charger is working right. Hold on. There we go. I'll try to make this work one more time. I'm gonna see, I think I've got another one of these CSX engines. So we'll try to run uh, two of them in tandem here. And if it works, we'll be able to run this for a couple loops and then I think we'll uh, finish things off here. actually scratch that I remembered I was going to uh, run this earlier and I forgot so we're just gonna couple them both up we'll be in business <laughs> there we go I have bad news. I got a romantic partner, so I won't have time to watch your videos. Well, uh, I mean, good for you, though. If you found somebody you like, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Tyler's... <laughs> I, I don't think that it's the weight of this train. I think that there's something wrong with that CSX locomotive. Probably uh, one of the trucks isn't rotating or something. Who knows? I bet just this single Atherton engine will be able to pull these cars, though. Hey, Controller Packers, how's it going? Can you run the unstoppable locomotives? I already ran those earlier in the live stream, so I think we'll uh, save it for another day. Yeah, this one didn't get stuck.
Hello SMT, have you ever done a video converting a dummy locomotive into a running engine? I don't think I've made a video on that. I, I did the opposite. I made a video where I converted a dummy engine into a running model, but um, for anybody who's uh, trying to do so, all you need to do is you need to disconnect the motor. So you can remove the motor or you can just unclip the wires and then you have to um, remove the gears connected to the wheels. If you moved out, would you consider coming to the States? I'm not against the idea of uh, living in America. I love the country. I go there multiple times a year. Um, we have property down there too, so it's, uh, it's a wonderful place, but almost all my family is here. Uh, I do have some family in the States, but the majority of us are all here in Ottawa, so I don't think I'm gonna leave. I'm pretty happy here, honestly. Um, I think the uh, the only big thing is that property's a lot cheaper in the states, so that that's a good incentive. But yeah, I don't know. I don't see that happening. Tyler, I've turned plenty of my working life like GP38-2s into dummies and painting them. Such a cheap way to look like you've got more motive power. It's true. Oh, another derailment. The U.S. can be dangerous. Well, so can Canada. I don't know. It depends what area you're in. It's not in a big country like Canada or the United States. It's not that black and white. I don't know. Downtown Ottawa these days, I tell you what, you go down there and uh, it's a little dodgier than it once was. Like, I don't know. I'd, I'd argue I feel safer when I'm in Maine than I do... Uh, here in Gatineau. <laughs> Not that it's like a super treacherous place, but just comparatively speaking. Hey SMG, I just wanted to say, uh, leave a quick message that I've been watched all your repair videos in the last two weeks. Super cool, repairing that RS3 made me laugh so much. That was a fun project. There's not too many videos where I get to uh, submerge a locomotive in vinegar, so yeah, that was uh, a unique one for sure. Hey Harrison, I got a 1776 Tyco locomotive. It's missing its rear drive. Can I replace it with any other drive? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, one of the best things about the Tycos is that the parts are cross compatible. Um, so yeah, uh, the only difference is the truck covers, but yeah, you can pretty much just get get any other Tyco power torque and it will work fine. Maine is a low crime state. I'm not surprised to hear that. I don't know, like, I find around in Maine, there are businesses where there isn't even anybody running the place. Like, there'll be like a stand on the side of the road selling jam or something, and they'll just trust you to put money in the jar um, and pay for whatever it is you want. Uh, if you tried to set something like that up, parts around here, I don't think the business would be around for very long, but... You know, it's just uh, the way she goes. I think something's a little off with this Atherton engine. I find it's uh, derailing on certain switches, so might be a little off balance or something.
I also want to say I used your universal motor mount to fix a custom brass engine of mine yesterday because it had a plastic transmission that broke off. Like you said, I'm not building Cadillacs. That's just it. If, uh, you know, you're just working on dodgy old locomotives, you don't always have to do things perfectly. Uh, I've got some criticism, um, you know, on some model railroading forms and things like that. I've seen some people saying, oh, SMT mainline, you know, all he does is he takes these junk engines and then he does a junk repair on top of it. And, uh, you know, in some cases that's true, but it's like, you know, you buy an engine for $5. Do you want to go sinking $25 worth of parts off of eBay into it? I don't think so. So if you can get it working for, you know, pennies on the dollar, uh, to me, that's a win. I mean, I, I, you know, I try when I'm working on something like a brass engine or, um, you know, something nice to actually do the repairs properly and take my time. Like with the GS4, you know, I really spent uh, hours on that. And uh, there have been some other ones like that, but I don't know, for a $5 Tyco, just as long as it works, I'm happy with it. Love your repair videos, man. And hell with that. Easy repair is easy and fun. I'm not experienced, so it's very hard for me to do it the right way. Got up from being up and running. Yeah, it's true too. I mean, if you're, you know, if your only goal with repairing something isn't even to make it run right, it's just to enjoy the process of repairing it. I guess uh, even if the results are not necessarily good, you've still technically succeeded. Anyways, I think we'll uh, finish things off there. I want to thank you all so much for uh, joining in this evening. I had a lot of fun uh, chatting with all of you and running some various trains, and I hope you all enjoyed as well. Anyways, uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll finish things off there. I'll read a few last comments here. I think that that's derailed, so I'm just going to cut off the power. Um, SMT, do you cuss often? Awkward question. I actually do. Uh, whenever I'm building something or working on motors and stuff like that, uh, I, uh, I swear quite a bit. It's just a good way to get your frustrations out. I try not to on these live streams and uh, in my videos just because I see it as, uh, you know, kind of like impolite. But um, I'm not against it, you know. I don't know. I feel like there's a time and a place for things. And uh, out in the garage is uh, time for me to swear while things go wrong with my motor or whatever else I'm working on. You name it. Anyways, with that, <laughs> we'll finish things off. Have a terrific night, everyone.